Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I'm Manon Lloyd. And I'm Alex Payton. Oh, it's good to be back on the Tech Show. Coming up this week, we have the spiciest of hot techs, your comments, and of course, the bike fault. And for our main talking point this week, seeing as the Tour de France is on, we thought we'd discuss what happens when the Tour de France riders crash and the tech that's out there to keep you safe when you're out on the road. Any other reason why we're discussing crashing this week, Alex? Nope. Nope, no idea. It's not fake, by the way. It's not fake news. <laughs> First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. Yeah, you and Ollie ask, should aero balaclavas be banned by the UCI? We had, yes, they look ridiculous, or no, they are faster. And well, surprise, surprise, 79% of you said yes, they look ridiculous, and 21% of you said no, they're faster. I bet you Ollie said, no, they're faster. No, I think he's actually against them. Is he? Yeah, he is against them. Oh, interesting. Um, interesting results. Anyway, on to our main talking point, talking about what happens when Tour de France riders crash. And it seems like a relevant topic because those of you with an incredible eye for detail might have noticed that I've a little bit bashed up myself as it is. Yeah, you've really done a good job there. But there yeah. has been a load of crashes at the Tour de France this year and some so bad that the riders have had to retire or ride on in pain and neither. It's really very good, is it? How do you know? Um, how do you know there's been loads of crashes? Well, I'm glad you asked, Alex, because I have been watching live and ad-free on GCN Plus. <gasps> Sorry, I had to get it in early. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, crashing sucks. I had a big crash last week. I just want to say thanks to everyone that sent me a message, and uh, not thanks to those that didn't. You know, and also big thanks to Nurse Ricky at Bath Hospital, kind enough to scrub out all my cuts while I was in the shower. Turns out. He's a big GCN GMBM fan. Well, fair play, Ricky, because not many people would agree to wash Alex's cuts in the shower. Nah. But anyway, us cyclists, well, we don't really wear much when we're out on the bike. A thin bit of lycra, and that does not leave much between us and the ground when we crash. No. Now, the pros, they're pretty good at avoiding crashes, but sometimes it's kind of like inevitable. And if you haven't seen Wout Van Aert on I can't remember what stage it was, this year's tour, avoiding going to the back of this team car. It's pretty impressive, right? Check this out. Whoa! That was close. If that was me, would have been on the floor. Yeah. Um, would you? Yeah, You'd definitely. have probably been all right. No. Okay, anyway, so we should probably run through what actually happens in the event of a crash in a race. So first things first, what are they going to have to do? Well, first of all, someone is probably going to scrape you up off the floor, or you're going to have to scrape yourself up. And then I guess the next thing is checking that you're actually all right. Check your helmet if it's not smashed, and then obviously the bike mechanic will run to you with a spare bike and check your bike over. They're pretty quick with the medical car as well at the race. Yeah, the medical medical car will be they're just behind the actual race, so yeah. they'll be the first at the scene. So, so the first thing they're gonna well. do is like assess everything. Nine times out of ten, if it's not too bad, the riders will be pretty quick at getting back up, getting onto a bike and getting moving. Yeah. And once they're moving again, the first thing they'll do is get straight to that medical car because it means they can get back into the race, get some attention and then the medical team are gonna assess what they need to do. But I mean, if it was bad enough in the first instance, I mean, you're not gonna be getting back up. But you? a lot of the time, you get up really quickly off the floor because you've got so much adrenaline, and then you get up and then you're like, oh, yeah, not okay. Not okay, no. it kind of hits you afterwards, it doesn't does. it? It um, does. So once they are at the medical car, you'll see, especially if you're watching the racing live, they'll be spraying stuff over their arms, trying to clean all the cuts out. A lot of times they do this when they're actually riding as well, don't they? They'll be going to like 40k an hour plus. Just hanging out the car window. Yeah. It's kind of quite a thing to watch, isn't it? It is, yeah. Scary. Yeah, so they'll be trying to clean the stuff out. They'll be spraying like antiseptic sprays and stuff like that to avoid infections, and then covering the wounds. And then you'll see them apply what's like a sort of tubular mesh bandage. So quite different to the stuff I've got. It's like a sock or a I've stocking, got. I or guess. Or like Ollie's fishnet tights that he sometimes wears. Yeah, they'll come in handy. He, he doesn't normally wear them, to be honest. It's just, just a joke. Sometimes. So yeah, you'll see the riders wrapped up on all the bandages and if they're not too bad, they'll make it to the finish within the time limit and be ready to start the next stage. Sometimes in between the start of the next stage, you might have even gone to hospital to be checked out and make sure they're okay and then they can start the next day, but you quite often see them positioned at the back, won't you? Yeah, which is fair enough because they will be a little bit sore after their crash. But in terms of tech, what can us everyday riders do to improve 
if we do happen to find ourselves in a situation where we crash. The first thing that comes to mind is sensors. And we see a lot of these in, well, the most common I'd say is the Garmin head unit sensor and the specialized helmet. Yeah, so they're incorporated like, into these devices which can detect um, severe movements, which Impact. they would, yeah, they would count as a crash, bad enough to be as a crash. I think the specialized system is called Angie. Get this right. It stands, what does that stand for, Alex? I'm glad you asked me that. I actually looked it up. It stands for Angular and G Force Indicator. Mm -hmm. So the Angie system is mounted onto like your head, like on a helmet system, whereas the Garmin one is on your bike. So one of them is recorded from the bike and one's recorded from your body. So there's different ways of going about it, isn't it? So these are really clever and the way they work is it'll detect when you've had a crash and it'll then set a timer. And if you don't cancel that timer within the set time, it'll then alert your emergency contacts that you've had an accident and it'll send them your last known location, which is really good. Super helpful. It that is, actually yeah. would have been really helpful in my crash. It would have been, yeah. Mm. Instead, I just had to message someone, help. Help. Yeah, that was all I could type. Did it work? Yeah, help came. Yeah, that was good. That well, was great. Yeah. So these devices are relying on you having a smartphone they can be paired up to. They can't, you know, dial out themselves. They haven't got a phone signal within those units. But as an absolute minimum, I think you should carry a phone every time you ever go on a ride. Oh, because definitely. in most cases, that will mean that you can get some sort of help. Yeah, and every time I go out on a bike ride on my own, I always share my live location. You can do that, obviously, on your phone, on different messaging apps, or you could do it on your Wahoo head unit. Mm, so a lot of head way. units will do that as well, where you can just share your live locations. It's good really because good. it also means it shares your location to all of like your, your friends when you're out doing your epic rides and they might be stuck at work or sat on the sofa. Make them feel a bit bad. Yeah, true. <laughs> so as well as stuff like that, there's other apps which are really great for pinpointing your location. What Three Words is probably a super common one. Really yeah, sort of gets it down to a small square and each square has got a unique three word code. Yeah, and the emergency services here in the UK do use what three words. So if you do crash, you can just, they'll ask, you know, where are you? And if you don't know, you know, where you are, the name of the road, you can just look at that and say, I am at Cat Dog Fish. <laughs> I love the fact they're so obscure as well. <laughs> I've actually looked up, um, I've pinpointed a square just outside of GCN Megabase, yeah. not exactly right where we are now. Um, do you know what it is? Yeah. Pool Cover Hero. Very random. Mm. But well, that's the best works, bit about yeah. it. I, I imagine in an emergency, you probably wouldn't find the randomness of it that funny. No, would you? probably not. No. Um, dog. Yeah, I guess protective clothing and protective kit is the next best place to start. Yes. Helmets? H helmet is probably the main one. I mean, I wouldn't really ride a bike without a helmet. I don't think I've ever ridden a bike without a helmet. Sometimes casually, like if I'm just going to local place, not far. You should still wear a helmet, Alex. Some of, the, some of my worst crashes have been going really slow. Well, there you go. Um, now, it makes sense to wear a helmet, as we just said, but lots of places around the world have got different laws and regulations about it. Some places it's mandatory, but bizarrely, some of the most popular cycling nations don't enforce that by law. Yeah, it's hmm. really weird. But also another one on helmets is to have an up-to-date helmet because helmet tech and information has come on so yeah. much in the last, I mean, few years. So having a helmet that is up-to-date and that reaches those safety Standards. Standards. That's the word it's really you're important. For. Yeah. Lots of helmet manufacturers recommend that, regardless of whether you've had a crash or not, that you should replace them every five years or so, yeah. just because the materials degrade over time. And I mean, in the event of a crash, you want to be as safe as possible. Mm. Yeah. And another thing on helmets is when you do crash or or hit the floor, make sure to check your helmet. And if you just push it slightly, and there is a tiny little crack, that means you need to replace your helmet. So that's what helmets are designed to do. That they're, they're designed to crack when you when yeah. you crash. And if that does happen, contact your helmet manufacturer and they could actually replace your helmet for free if you have yeah, had a crash. Yeah, lots of places do that yeah. or do a discounted new one. Yeah. Other bits of protective clothing are, well, is actually the clothing. So yeah. the cycling kit with specific panels sewn into it on like the shoulders, the hips, which are made of much stronger material. Now Dyneema is one of the most popular sort of brand names for this anti-tear material which is added in as a second layer to the normal material, as I say, on the hips, the shoulders. Costelli makes them like this. Other brands as well do. I think last year at the tour, we saw Team DSM using yeah, some as we well. Yeah, we did, yeah. So a few teams used mm -hmm. that over the years, certainly in the early stages of the tour. And you, had, you could see it when they'd, they'd crashed. The jersey had been ripped to shreds, but the under jersey was just in one piece. Pretty clever, eh? And another one, I'm not sure if I should mention this, but gloves. Gloves. I wish I'd been wearing gloves at the time when I crashed. 
I mean, that you do you do a lot with your hands. You do. You don't want to have cuts on your hands. You don't so want to have cuts on your hands. Is always a good one. Yeah, good quality glove with a strong palm material. Yeah. You don't want to go straight through to your skin, just like my hands. Yeah. You heard it here first. Now, it kind of goes without saying that a well-maintained bike is going to help you avoid crashes. Definitely. You want things like the gears to be working fine and, most importantly, the brakes. You, the last thing you want is to be smashing downhill doing a sprint, your gears jump and you flop off your bike and you're on the floor. I've actually seen that before. Yeah. It's, it's a horrific sight yeah. to see. Now, there are... Well, going back to protective clothing, actually. There's loads of very fancy pants bits of kit out there to help keep you safe. Now, the first thing that I'm thinking of in terms of the fancy pants stuff is like commuting bags because there are some real clever ones that have got airbags built into them, again with these sort of crash sensors that as soon as they detect that impact, well not well before they've detected the impact, they already know that you're going to have a crash and they've inflated to keep you safe. Cool thing is, I actually experienced this last year at the IAA show where the people at the stand were kind enough to set it off while I stood there and it's, it's pretty impressive. Hopefully, we can have a quick look at that. Check this out. Airbag demonstration in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. But what happens if you're not actually gonna have a crash and then it just goes off? It literally won't go off. No. What if it did? It's like, the technology in there is like tried and tested. It, yeah, it'll be all right. You'd just be standing there. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I was doing, yeah, but they, they like doing, manually yeah. set it off. <laughs> Imagine you were commuting on the train with it on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that stuff is really clever because it's it it's kind of technology taken from like the motorbike world and then refined down for the cycling aspect. So those are some of the bits that we think and the tech that we think helps keep you safe. But obviously, we've just scratched the surface. Absolutely loads of stuff out there. So um, yeah, comment underneath this video and let us know the bits and methods of how you stay safe when you're out on the road. I think we should also have a poll as well. And the poll is gonna be, do you think helmets should be mandatory? Oh, that's that's gonna be quite dis it is, yeah. yeah. Well, I wanna know everybody's thoughts. So um, yeah, head over to poll and vote. Over on the GCN app, of course. On the app. Yeah, we'll discuss it next week. We've gone forever discussing sort we of could, weather yeah. And we're going away to it. Anyway, I've rambled on. It's now time for Hot and Spicy Tech. Yeah, this week it kind of feels like we've got slim pickings a little yeah, bit, really. Most hot tech has going to be launched already at the Tour de France, or it's going to be launched at Eurobike. But fear not, Oli is on a GCN tech mission to not only eat as much German sausage as possible, but also he's going to be at Eurobike picking out the latest and greatest hot tech and sharing it with you guys at home. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, then you know what to do. Subscribe to GCN Tech, hit that bell icon, make sure you don't miss out. Right, first up, Malin, this week, what have we got? A new trainer from Elite. We have, hmm. yes. So this is the Elite Justo, or Justo? I'm not entirely sure how you say it. Justo. Um, so this is their top specs or flagship trainer, just been released. Some of the stats that we've got here, what have we got? Do you want to take us through some of them? Oh, speed, cadence, power. So it records got, all of the like usual stuff, yeah. everything does. It's got 1% um, accuracy, yeah. it goes up to 24% gradient. That's pretty good, and that's I can sweet. tell you that it also works for the Elite Riser. Oh, so that's it? the that's the sort of device where you put the forks into, Makes adjust you the like gradient of the hill. bike. So the Elite Riser will go up to 20% in terms of the bike position, but the Justo Trainer will replicate the gradients of about 24%, mm. like it says. It also works without power, but if you do use it without power, you don't get any of the interactive stuff. That's a good That's a good point, actually. It's got um, two different sets of feet to allow for a sort of amount of flex within the trainer itself to replicate some of the natural movement you get. It's cool. And we've seen it used by Group Armour, FDJ, and um, UAE Team Emirates at the tour. Oh. Pretty cool, eh? Tried and tested by the very best. Mm. Actually, speaking of Team UAE, take a look at these absolute boss shoes that Tade Pogaccio is using in this year's tour. So these are customised by Caitlin Fielder. So they're a DMT KR0 shoe, and then Caitlin Fielder has done the custom artwork on them. Same lady that did Wild Van Art shoes. They are super cool. And if you have some time, go and check her Instagram out because there are so many cool custom shoes on there. So not only are these cool and custom and super cool looking, they represent something very important. They have a nice meaning behind them. Yeah, so I'm just having a look at our Instagram page now. So the lavender ribbon, it says, represents all cancers as a whole. And then at the end of the tour, they're going to be auctioned off and all the, the money raised from, from selling them is going to go towards the Tade Pogaccia Cancer Research Foundation. That's really cool. 
That, that's amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. They might be a bit stinky. They are going to be a bit stinky. Tour, but still. But seeing cool. as they're going to be worn by basically the world's best cyclists, and imagine if he wins the tour this year, which hopefully, likely. hopefully they're going to yeah. raise a lot of money for charity, which is it's incredible. It is. Uh, Very nice. Now, we've already said Oli is in Germany on a tech mission, so I've heard he's got a new set of Oakleys to check out. So oh. I guess we should head over to Oli with his Here's German it, or tech, see what he's got. Cheers, Alex. Yep, here in Frankfurt at Eurobike, not in Friedrichshafen, as it's been since forever, but it makes a nice change and there's loads of cool tech here. So much to see. Make sure that you hit the notifications so that you can see uh, the videos when we upload them because there's just so much exciting things that I can't wait to show you, including a wacky Kdex bike that I've just seen over there that is the craziest TT bike I think well, I've seen in a long time. Also, some hot new Oakleys for you. So because it's the Tour de France, Oakley have launched some special edition Tour de France classes. So they've got the Cato, uh, Jawbreakers, Holbrook, the casual ones, and then these, which are the Sutro Lights, as favoured by, well, Bernal, even though he's not at the Tour, and um, Vanderpool as well. But these special Tour de France ones, so they've got yellow on them, and also nice little Tour de France logo in the bottom corner of the prism lens. Well, what do you think? What do you think of these? Think I'll pull them off? What are we saying? Hot? or not. Obviously the glasses, not me. Not voting on me. Hot or not. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for more Hot Tech and, um, well, back to the studio. And finally in Hot Tech this week, some very important news for Muckoff as they just launched their Move Over campaign and they have got a limited edition bike cleaning bottle, which is very cool. This is super cool and important as well it too. Is. So the new design is on their OG cleaner, which if you're not cool like I am, you might not know that OG stands for Original Gangster. I didn't know that. So it's got, yeah, like a funky new design on it um, and to support the, the Move Over campaign. And then across the month of July, Mokov are donating 10% of their profits, but not only the Original Gangster Cleaner, but all of their range of pink cleaning products. And there's so, a, lo a lot of pink products on Mokov. Yes, yeah, so they're donating all that to these important um, foundations. So do you yeah. want to read some of these out? Yeah, so some of the non-profit organisations being supported include Cycle Sisters, Black Girls Do Bikes, the Women All Ride Collective, and long-term partner Homestretch. Um, the foundation who between them have provided support for women who have you know never ridden bikes and want to ride bikes all the way up to women podiuming in races on bikes. So it's all about breaking down the barriers between women and bikes. Yes. Sounds Very fantastic important. to me. Yeah. Um, more hot tech next week. It's now time for comment of the week. Now we haven't got a sick intro for this. Hopefully at some point in the future we might but hey who knows. So first comment is from underneath the Tade Pogaccia Pro bike that went out on the weekend. Last weekend is from Mike Magnuson, who says, "Oh, every time you pronounce Richard Meal, you pronounce it as Mila, like Mila. I don't even know." How you say Mille, that. Gilla, gilla. But since the owner designs, since it's the owner's designs name, it's pronounced Mill, like Pepper Mill. I said <laughs> otherwise. Great video. Oh, thanks, thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks very much. Now. We also found another selection of comments. There's quite a few comments here. Isn't yeah, there? I love the fact they were in close succession underneath. So do you yeah. want to do you want to start reading them off? Shall I kick it off? Real big energy into this. Buckle yourself in because you might be here a while. High energy. Come okay. On. Think your hand. So this one is from Robert Chubb. Yeah. No, it's not made by Ernesto Colonago. It's made in China, and if it will. It looks no different to the other heavyweight Chinese, Taiwan, Japanese, Shimano components that are getting heavier. Junk. And they say, fact, you the consumer are paying more for more weight. And they go, hmm. hmm. <laughs> Work it out. The industry needs and wants you to buy into their product. Rim brake, so last year. <laughs> if you do realize, if you buy a disc brake bar, you are buying more weight. Look at the facts before departing with your cash. Um, Symbols. I'll tell you what, poor old Robert, he has got himself in a right old pickle there, hasn't Yeah, he? God, he went on a big old rant. Robert, just chill out, take a deep breath, everything will be fine. It's going to be okay. No one's forcing you into do anything. Yeah. If you want to buy a rim brake bike, buy a rim brake you bike. You do you, honey. If you want to buy a disc brake bike, you do you. Yeah. Do your thing. Anyway, that's the <sighs> end of comment of the week. We'll be back. No, it's not. Week. We've got more. Don't worry, we've got more. I've oh, got a couple more God. here. Not sure I can take any more yeah, after no, sorry. that. Well, actually, I've got two easy comments. These are just from underneath last week's show. Okay, good. One was from Zed Bra Brown Browning. It says, Ollie's impression of Brian's mother is astonishing. It was actually the most liked um, comment underneath last week's was show. Was it? If you haven't seen it, it's incredible. Can we have that little clip now? 
He's not the messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Um, oh. Also, someone says, as much as I enjoy all the GCM presenters, such as yourself, Connor, Hank, we even had Mark from GTM, one not we? Yeah, um, they say it's nice to surf myself and Ollie back together. Thanks, just a nice comment. I know where. I After a few sort of I negative comments, I thought it was nice to have someone yeah, being yeah, that upbeat. Is really nice, yeah. hmm. um, more comments next week, which means it's now time for the bike vlog. It's time for the bike vlog. Where's the bell? The bell. Well, I'll get it. Don't worry, I'm I injured. Think, I'll get it. I don't it. think you're actually capable of ringing that bell today, Alex. I, I, I will do the honours. You do the honours. Let's face it, even if I was fully capable of if doing it. If you were able, I'd You'd have taken straight over, wouldn't yes. you? That's not. It's the, only, it's the only reason I'm at the moment. Um, so first up is the most super nice bike from last week on the GCN app, and it's from Jerry Chan 1225, the 1225th Jerry Chan. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. Who actually. knew we had that many Jerrys on the... On, um... <laughs> it's a factory Ostro. What do we make of this? I, I really like, like this. I mean, that just... Oh. It's I'm nice on the eyes. It's very nice on the eyes. I'm seeing more and more bikes these mm. days with Shimano group sets and these Campagnolo Bora Ultra wheels, mm. which we wouldn't have normally seen a uh, mixed match like that, but super I mean, nice. looks, looks lovely. They say even um, with the super deep wheels, size 54 is 7.2 kilos. Pretty respectable. Super nice, isn't it? I mean, they've spoken. It was the most super nice bike, so it has to be. All right. It's been a while since I've done that. A little bit rusty there, weren't you? Is it not a good one? No, it was, it was all right. Yeah. Okay, right. Are you so... ring that bell with your, no. with your <laughs> crutchy not, hand? I'm not ringing that. So first up this week, we've got Andreas uh, Sanchez with a Specialized S-Works Athos. What do you think of this? I mean, I love this chromey color. Yeah. And a bit of a fade on the forks, very nice. Would you say rose gold? Yeah, no? Say it more... Kind I'd of. say rose gold is a bit more bronzy. Okay. But yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a very nice colour, but... Let's judge not, it's it. Not, it's not bike fault worthy, is it? It's not in Biggie Smalls. Valves. Valves. I mean, there's a few sort of infractions And it's like here. the angle isn't quite right. No. It's a nice for me. It's, it's a nice a, It's me. a nice nice. Not Beautiful nice. bike, but unfortunately, a little bit more effort. Yes. Next up, who we got? Who have we got? We have um, one five... Oh no, Zap72. <laughs> <laughs> Zap72 with... Oh, another uh, S-Works. Yeah, Specialized S-Works Tarmac. God, this one's oh. metallic green though. Is it like a metallic British racing green, would you say? I would say, yeah. Mm. It's um, got a bit of a sparkle to it as well, which I like, and it's tan sidewalls. Yeah, love that. Um, it's not Biggie Smalls, mm. but the, the gears are well positioned, yeah, I'd the, say. Yeah, it's like Biggie Middle, which I... We can probably accept. I quite like Biggie Middle. Um, cranks are aligned, wheels are aligned. Valves are right. Good intentions here. We have very good intentions. I'm going to say super nice if you'd agree. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to agree with you. Yeah. Why not? Super nice. You, you, got it, you got it that time, that's for Better. sure. Our um, camera person is taking their headphones out. Yeah, they're not, not loving the whole Sorry. bell thing. So. Okay, right, next up is T Castro 4 <coughs> with an Orbea or Terra. Oh, I like this. I've oh. actually got one of these Orbea Terras, not in this funky Lucky, colour. Lucky you. I've got a sort of chromey silver one. It's really cool. Well, I think this slightly bigger size as well. It looks tiny, doesn't it? Yeah. But I do like that. Looks cool. This is um, is it the Mayo? Yeah, this they've must used, be a Mayo they've, one. They've, I, mean, I don't think it's a stock colour. Custom done this, which is very. I haven't seen those forks before. Nice design. design. It's very nice. And um, well, it's in Biggie Smalls, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I'm just uh, looking at the actual colours on it. I haven't actually looked at anything else, but I think everything is aligned. And how is the bike being held up? How is that being held up? Is that a shadow stand? Is either that or it's defying the laws. Do you reckon it's a bit of Photoshop? Could it be Photoshopped? I'm going to, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And I've said many times if they use a shadow stand, automatic super nice for me. You said it first. Mm. I mean, that is that does look really super nice. It's cool. It's oh my ears! Um, next up is Phil Rich, 2010, with a Ribble Endurance SL. Ooh. Oh, and nice. that sort of castle location. I'm assuming this isn't their house. It could, it could be. You could never be. know. Yeah. But cranks I mean, aren't aligned. It's not yeah. in the correct gear. Nice. Slightly jaunty angle. 
We haven't got a great level of detail of the bike because we've got a lot of background in there. The castle is very pretty though, but the, the way the bike is positioned gives me a little bit of anxiety. How's but it held up? It's been like scraped on something. Is it resting on the bottles? I think so. I think it's just... Well, I say it's, yeah. a, it's a lovely bike. We just yeah, wish you presented nice. it slightly better. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Next, next up, we have one in from Josh with another Orbea. Oh, is this an Avant? I'm not yeah. sure, I'm not too familiar with this one. Ours okay. is a sort of aluminium, slightly more entry level or a bit more of an affordable price point, maybe. Very nice bike. Presented the wrong way around. It is presented the wrong way around and oh, leaning up against the fence. Yeah, I'm not happy about this. Oh, that's a Cracking nice Cracking bike, me. really like it. It'd be great for people to get out riding on, but poorly presented, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, so it's just a nice for me. And unfortunately, oh, do you know what? That was the last bike in the bike vault. Oh, it was just too fast. I wish it never ended. I really do. Yes. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. Let us know in the comments section about any sort of tech that you use to keep safe. And don't forget, head over to our poll and let us know whether you think helmets should be mandatory or not. And also give some Alex some sympathy in yeah. the comments because he's feeling a little bit sorry for me. Give this video a like if you feel sorry for me. I'll, <laughs> I'll take the sympathy, sympathy vote when I can get it. Yeah. Cool. You've done well to pull through and and come and do the tech show, so well See done, ya. Alex. <laughs>